Go. So, Richard, from a um, trade point of view, we totally understand about the Chenin Blanc Association and what you do. But from a consumer's point of view, please, can you explain to us your relevance? <laughs> okay. I think from a... Okay, the first point is the Chenin Blanc Association was formed to raise the profile and image of Chenin, first and foremost. As a, as a relevancy directly to the consumer, the Chenin Blanc Association has arguably no relevance because the consumer isn't ranged in the Chenin Blanc Association. But the Chenin Blanc Association, as a, what its sort of modus operandi is, is to promote Chenin in times when Chenin itself has been basically used as a workhorse grow party. And we have to look at its history. Its history was for brandy production. Uh, basically, it's had a high acidity. It was then used for um, bulk wine. The clones that we used were for, were, were for quant quantity. And it was planted in areas where quantity was achievable, the swart land, and, and other areas of, of even southern bush as well. Now, the, the problem is, is that that has now passed. And in those days, we had a huge amount under vine, 34. 35% under vines of Chenin. With now the new trendy of varieties, well I say new and trendy, I mean in the last 20 years we've transformed from Chenin into you know, the more Sauvignon Blancs, you know, the Cabernets, Shiraz obviously has made a major impact, and the new quirky Viognier's and you know, all the other ones. But Chenin itself has been uprooted or grubbed up. Now, the aim of the Chenin was to look at the grubbing up program as rather, rather than grub up Chenin in an arbitrary fashion so that anything gets grubbed up, is to say, well, hang on a sec, what a sec, it's our heritage. It's the oldest vines we have in this country. We don't have anything older. And the Australians have always been very, very vocal about that old vine Shiraz. What are we doing grubbing this stuff up? Yes, there's some crappy stuff, there's some poor, poor vines, but there's some really cracking stuff in amongst that, which is old vines, low-yielding low vines producing excellent concentration, small berries producing excellent intensity, because they're mostly bush vine generally, or a one-wire trellis. And that's where we've started to harness that and say, come on, guys, you know, don't just pull it up, think a little bit. There are people who, as producers here now, who want to go to those growers, and we have to emphasize it's it's farm it's wine producers going to growers as as opposed to farmers say having an estate with old vines. That's not necessarily the case because the growers have inspired the co-ops. So the fact is is that they supply the co-ops, they get a, a negligible price for their product. They realize well they can get more if they plant Sauvignon. We're saying wait 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 we'll give you a better price for your Chenin. We will do something with it, and we are proving that we can do something with it. We, we are promoting the style. So we're looking at, as you say, these styles now, fresh and fruity and all rich and right, which we in installed about eight, eight or nine years ago. But now we are, and we're looking, and we're evaluating whether that's the right direction or, but we are saying, listen, what can we do with Shannon? We can make some of the most sublime wines. Shannon is the most, it's one of the most interesting grape varieties. It's what I call a noble grape variety. My definition of a noble variety is this. Shannon is like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, like Chardonnay, has the ability to do things that Sauvignon, which is not a noble variety, it's more like a classic variety, as Jazz Robinson puts it. Sauvignon is a one dimension, it's a one trick pony, it's a fresh, fruity, in an oak style. That's all it does. It's very few wooded wines, and they are more kind of collector's things rather than anything. Shannon has the ability to be wooded or non wooded, sweet or not sweet. It has, as a affinity with oak, it has the ability to be aged for a huge period of time. It has a naturally high malic acidity, not a contract, so the malic green apple acidity. That's what the Loire have done so well. The problem with Shannon that creates confusion. That's why the Loire have struggled. They don't know where they're going. They've They've got all sorts of weird and wonderful stars, and a guy looking at it goes, well, I don't know what it is, I'm not going to buy it. So they buy dependability, they buy a Sauvignon, they know what it's going to do. Our job is to promote to the public, okay, listen, Shannon is versatile, it's different, but these are our styles, here we've got some interesting styles from that today, and it's a brilliant food wine. It's going to be, it's a, it's a, it has the, it has a broad bit palette structure, which is very similar to Chardonnay, but it doesn't have the creaminess, so it has this natural acidity which can cut through much more food. It goes with Asian food, nothing else goes with Asian food. 